sustaining the gift of love. Love is a gift. We talk about the love chapter and the gift of love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It is a gift that is worth investing in and sustaining. So I'm going to encourage you. Yes, and Rush, my friend, is reading. What on earth am I here for? God bless you, man. I love you. That is so cool. I know this is just going to be strengthening and encouraging for you. We are having a great time on Encouragement Wednesday and Encouragement Thursday going through What on Earth Am I Here For? Also called The Purpose Driven Life. I hope you're with us on that because it is such a journey. Our 40 days together is an investment that is going to reap great spiritual dividends. Well, sustaining the gift of love. We're going to look at that together, but first... Take your Bible in hand and stand with me, if you would, please, as we make this powerful declaration together. This is my Bible. It is the incomparable, inerrant, authoritative Word of God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. I choose to live as it calls me to live. I am open and ready to receive from God's living Word. You may be seated and turn to Ephesians chapter number 4. As I tell you a story, I told you this once before. Yes, but I felt it fit so appropriately with sustaining love. A couple was asked about how they managed to stay married for 50 years. And the husband says, well, it all goes back to our honeymoon. And he said, our honeymoon, we went to the, the Grand Canyon together. And we went, my wife said, I want to go down the, into the canyon. So we rented a donkey. And we started riding. She was on the donkey. I stood next to her, and we're going down the Grand Canyon to get there. And as we're going along, the donkey slipped on some rocks. And when the donkey slipped, my new wife looked at him and said, That's one! And I didn't know what she was referring to. But we go on a little bit farther and the donkey hit a soft spot in the rocks and slid a little bit more and skidded. And my wife got upset. She said, that's two. Well, we got down to the bottom of the canyon and when we got down there, the the donkey tripped on something and just moved over to the side and my wife said, that's three. She opened up her purse. She got out a gun and shot the donkey right in the head. And I said, what did you do that for? I mean, we just rented that donkey. That donkey's not ours. And my wife looked at me. She said, that's one. (laughs) Sustaining the gift of love. (laughs) Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. And with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This is a wow, powerful introduction to this chapter. And I think you're going to see today why these words are so incredibly important to introduce this last half of the book of Ephesians. As we launch into this, remember we had in the first two verses, we had four different ways that the Apostle Paul shared with us to keep love flowing. We need to do that because if we're not careful, we will kink the flow of love and cut it off in our lives and through our lives. The Apostle Paul shared four ways to unkink the hose and keep it flowing properly The first is to have an attitude of lowliness keeps love flowing. An attitude of lowliness, also called humility, is an inside-out virtue produced by comparing ourselves to the Lord rather than to other people. It brings the behavior, our behavior, into alignment with this inner revelation to keep ourselves from becoming self-exalting. We need this. Don't compare yourself to other people because what is that going to do? It's just going to result in either false security or insecurity. 
So don't do that. It will produce discouragement in your life. It will produce emptiness in your life. God's Word speaks against doing that. Instead, comparing yourself to Jesus. And not in the sense of he, He's just everything. I'm, a, I'm just nothing. I'm squatting. I'm just a worm. And just No, no, no. You don't look at that as Him putting you down because He doesn't. He didn't come to put you down. He came to pick you up. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through Him the world might be saved. John 3, 17. Jesus is not out to condemn you and put you down. Don't you feel condemned? God doesn't want you doing that. Don't condemn yourself in looking to Jesus. Instead, you see Him, as we see in Ephesians 4, verse 13, as your example that will then guide you and show you how you can live the life that will be filled with His blessing and bring true fulfillment. In the process of that, this is in contrast to arrogantly making ourselves out better than other people. That arrogance will kink the hose and kink the flow of love. Humility helps, whereas arrogance assaults. This is an inside-out virtue, just like your diaphragm muscle regulates your breathing. This word is from the Greek word from which we get our word diaphragm. And it means that having a heart desire to be like Jesus also regulates yours and my treatment of other people. We want to be like Jesus. Don't let anything kink the flow of love in your life. Be humble, not arrogant. The second action is the action in gentleness keeps love flowing. Gentleness is so important. It's not weakness. It is instead incredible strength like an oxen. It is strength that is harnessed. It is great power under control. Gentleness is linked to mercy and to kindness. And the flow of love is kinked by harshness, by meanness, by hardness or cruelty. So don't let anything kink the flow of love within your life. Be gentle, not harsh. The third thing was the art of long-suffering that we looked at together last week. Long-suffering means big patience, a long time before you get angry. It is an art of long-suffering, we said, in that it is a skill which you acquire by experience and study and observation. If you missed that, I encourage you to take time to watch that message. It is available for you online. Paul said our love needs to suffer long to really hang in there because impatience will kink the flow of love. So don't let anything kink your flow of love. Be patient, not angry. And the fourth thing that we looked at is the aperture of bearing with one another keeps love flowing. What is bearing with one another? Bearing means to tolerantly keep hanging in there. Be tolerant and hang in there. An aperture, remember, is the opening of a lens just like your pupil dilates to let in more light. We use that to explain the idea of Go into marriage with your eyes wide open so you're not making foolish choices. And then once you're married, keep them half shut. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that from 1 Corinthians 13, we learn that love believes and hopes. It focuses on the good in people instead of the negative. And you need to have that aperture controlling, just like in a portrait picture where the background is blurred and only the person's in focus, you need to make sure you blur the background stuff that's irrelevant and unimportant. And you put your focus on what's important and what's positive and not the negative. It is really easy to focus on the negative of somebody else. Don't do that. Have the aperture of bearing with one another. Focus on the positive. Because being negative and being intolerant kinks the flow of love. Don't let that happen to you. Don't let anything kink your flow of love. Be tolerant, not critical. So the attitude of lowliness, be humble, not arrogant. 
Action in gentleness, be gentle, not harsh. The art of long-suffering, be patient, not angry. And the aperture of bearing with one another, be tolerant and not critical. As you do that, you will sustain the gift of love because those four things are the sustainers for the gift of love. And when the gift of love is flowing, it helps create unity. Now, at the end of this time that we spend together, we're going to have a little brainstorming and interaction time. So you'll want to be thinking now, because on the back half of the outline, I have a couple of blank spots for you to write down. And you can even write down as we're going through this continuing of this message, maybe there's some areas in your life where you can think of, you know, I could keep the unity better in my relationships, protect and build my relationships, especially in the household of God, but all of your relationships. What could you do to better keep unity and protect your relationships? You think about that as I share some thoughts with you as we look basically at verse number 3. Now verse number 3 tells us this. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That's really a cool thought. The problem is you read that verse and we can just read past it really quickly without taking time to really fully understand it. And one of the ways to understand the Scriptures is to take one word at a time and just go through it one word or just a few words at a time and to consider the impact of each of those things. For example, endeavoring. Endeavoring means to be diligent. The Greek word here means that you need to really put effort forth into this. That this is not just worthy of your effort, but it requires your effort. And this is where you and I can get into a challenge. Because we can become lackadaisical in our relationships. We can begin to take each other for granted. You're familiar with that expression. Don't take a person for granted. And that's real easy to have happen when you're going into the scenario of longevity of your relationship. You can begin to not appreciate the person and all that they do as much as you should. We need to endeavor. We need to put effort into this. We need to be diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This means you need to keep working at your relationships. Your relationships are the most important thing you have in your life. You call it a thing? Sure, the Bible says, He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor in the eyes of the Lord. So there you go. <laughs> your relationships are the most important things you have in your lives. They are worth your effort. And you need to continue to put effort into your relationships. Now it says endeavoring to keep, to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. To keep. The idea of keeping is very important here. I want you to understand the Holy Spirit wants you to grasp this. And so the Holy Spirit was so very gracious in choosing the right words. What are the right words? Are the right words the ones you find in the New King James, the King James, the NIV, the ESV version, the New Living Translation, the Message version? Now, the Holy Spirit's more precise than that. Those versions are only trying to take what the Holy Spirit anointed in the original language and translate them into our current understanding so that we're able to grasp them. When the Holy Spirit took and gave these words to the Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit, of course, chose the precise words from Paul's vocabulary to make sure that we could understand what the truth the Holy Spirit was conveying to us was fully signifying. So the Holy Spirit chose words that would be exactly what the Holy Spirit wanted. Endeavoring to keep. To keep means, first of all, 
you've already been given something. You can't keep something you don't have, right? To keep it means you've already been given that, and it means you, it's your possession. You're supposed to keep it. You don't have to make it. You have to keep it. You don't have to make unity. It is a natural byproduct in the spirit realm of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you unity. Did you know that? When you are getting married and you stand before a pastor, and that pastor then blesses your marriage, you know what happens at that moment? The Holy Spirit's unity becomes a possession of that man and that wife. And that man and that wife are responsible to keep the unity that the Holy Spirit gives them. When you become a member of the family of God, you give your life to Christ. You have the Holy Spirit residing within you. And you then have a connection with the Holy Spirit in every believer. And you need to keep that unity. And that includes in your home. In your home, God wants unity and closeness. You don't have to make it. You just, learn have to, you just have to learn to walk in the Spirit and keep what God has already given you. Now, I mentioned the Holy Spirit gave a specific choice of the words that are written here. Let me share with you what the Holy Spirit did not say and what the Holy Spirit did say. You see, the Holy Spirit could have chosen many different Greek words within the Apostle Paul's linguistic abilities. The Holy Spirit did not use the word to keep as in philoso. Think of lasso something. Like you lasso a, a runaway horse or you lasso a, a runaway bull or cow. Well, the Holy Spirit didn't use a philoso. Because lasso means that you're going to keep it from escaping. It's trying to get away. You have to lasso it to tie it down and keep it from escaping. The Holy Spirit didn't use this word which is translated as keep because unity is not something that is tenuous. It is not something that's trying to escape. It is the natural work of the Holy Spirit. It seeks to stay. It's not trying to break away. Another thing that the Holy Spirit did not use, another word the Holy Spirit did not use, is the Greek word kustodia, from which we get our English word custody. To take a prisoner into custody, you are putting them in a jail. As in soldiers actually keeping something from getting out. Those soldiers have a prisoner in custody. Well, the Holy Spirit did not use the word custodia, which also is translated in English as to keep something, because unity isn't supposed to be imprisoned. Unity needs to be free to spread. Unity is not trying to get away. Unity is trying to influence and to spread and to bring encouragement and to flow amongst us. Unity needs to be allowed to be free to flow. And we need to make sure we do what the Holy Spirit did give us. When the Holy Spirit oversaw the writing of the Apostle Paul, giving us this inerrant, infallible, authoritative Word of God, the Holy Spirit chose the word terrain here. And it means you keep an eye on it. You're observant. You're paying attention to it. You're keeping an eye on it. Why? Because you want to prevent loss or prevent injury to it. This is what you're doing. This is what the Holy Spirit said. You need to keep an eye on unity. Be watching it to prevent loss of unity and to prevent injury to unity. All right? To prevent loss or unity and your closeness in your relationships. 
You see, this can happen when people take each other for granted. Between a husband and wife, between children, between friends, between family members, between co-workers. You know, one of the things is the expression you've heard before, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And all too often, we don't realize the treasure and the value that God has placed in blessings around our lives. You need to prevent the loss of unity and closeness in your relationships. I am reminded, do I have time for this story? I hope so. I am reminded of one gentleman who was a, a soldier, and he was just in, incredibly connecting type of person. And a superior officer asked, that guy just seems to just connect with everybody. What's, what is that about? He said, well, you have to understand where he came from. He was a minesweeper. And he went and he was the only surviving minesweeper in his graduating group from boot camp and from school because all of his fellow minesweepers were all killed in action, all blown up. And when those guys went out in the morning, they never knew who or if they were coming back. And he learned, you, you keep things on a short leash. You live with a life of forgiveness. You don't leave things on the table because you might not be there at the end of the day to take them back off. Don't leave things on the table. You need to approach every day and keep your relationships good and be careful. Be careful. I've heard too many people tell me, you know, the last word that I said to that person was not good. And they live with a torment and a torture and a regret because they didn't have a healthy relationship at the time somebody was removed from their life. Don't leave things on the table. You need to prevent loss of unity and keep closeness in your relationships. You also need to prevent injury to the unity and closeness in your, of your relationships. Prevent injury. And the most important way, I'm just going to tell you straight up, the most important way to prevent injury is to prevent your mouth from saying things it ought not to say. Remember this chapter is also where we come to Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. No injuring word is what that means. Don't shoot your mouth off. Don't say things that are going to hurt. Because the scripture tells us the power of the tongue is for life and death. You can either build or you can kill with the power of your tongue. If you don't have something good to say, and I don't mean it unkindly, but I mean it sincerely and very, very strongly. If you don't have something good to say, shut up. Tape your mouth shut. Remember? Our first Peter 3.10 duct tape for your mouth. <laughs> you need that first Peter 3.10 duct tape for your mouth. Don't injure the unity and closeness of your relationships, especially with your words as well as, of course, by your actions. But I see more people injure them by their words than by anything else. You see, the Holy Spirit really cares about your relationships. You need to understand the Holy Spirit cares about you and your relationships. If it's important to you and your relationships are, it is, of course, important to God. And the Holy Spirit, therefore, wants you to invest good things that will bless and strengthen your relationships, especially, according to Galatians 6.10, especially those relationships in the family of God. Why? God wants to have unity in His family, unity in His body. But God wants that for all of your relationships. And you and I need to see that we need to do good things and invest the good things because here's the reality 
If you go to the bank and you take out money that you did not put in there, you are either going to be paying it back with interest or they call it bank robbery and you go to jail. <laughs> you got to invest first. And if you're not investing, you are either draining the interest of your relationship or you are stealing from it. Invest in your relationships. Bless and strengthen them. You need to see the Holy Spirit really cares about you. The Holy Spirit also cares about your church and the body of Christ and wants you to care about building and sustaining unity. In fact, this is what the rest of chapter 4, all the way through chapter 5, verse 21, is all about. It's all about building unity in your relationships, unity in the body of Christ and unity in your relationships. This is the introduction to the greatest portion of the book of Ephesians. When you look at the outline that I have created for you and shared with you in our Encouragement Wednesdays, you remember that six-point outline is reproduced for there in a footnote for you on today's message. This section is so vitally important because God wants you to see that He cares about your relationships. And the Holy Spirit gives each one of us this wonderful and this precious responsibility of investing and building and blessing our relationships. So here we are endeavoring to keep the unity. What is this unity of? This is unity of the Spirit. Unity that comes from the Holy Spirit Himself. Unity that you need to see like we saw from Zechariah 4, 6. Remember that, those messages at the beginning of this year? Don't despise the day of small beginnings. And we introduced for you our 2020 vision, right? And TBA, which meant to bless Algoma. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. And Zechariah, the prophet of encouragement. Remember Pastor Zach with the Z instead of the S Superman symbol? Because Zechariah, our superpower, is the power of encouragement. Encouragement is the superpower that the Holy Spirit gives you. And Zechariah 4.6 says, It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. You want unity? Unity comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the creator, the sustainer of unity. And you and I need to walk in the Spirit, and especially the Spirit of encouragement, to make that unity flow. We keep the unity of the Spirit, how? In the bond of peace. And if it comes in the bond of peace... It comes from peace and it carries peace with it. So you therefore need to be a peacemaker. Like Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God wants you to be a person that makes peace and builds healthy, sustaining, building bridges between you and other people. Now this is a trying time. We are trying to keep the unity in the divisiveness of COVID. COVID is separating people. Someone shared with me this morning just a little bit of how this time has just been pulling people too far apart and how it is discouraging. And I, I can relate to that. And I hear this several times every week. Somebody else sharing how difficult these days are. But you and I need to see that God wants us to have closeness together. Now, I'm going to give you a few moments now. I have about five minutes left. And during this time, I want you to text me with how you personally can better keep unity to protect it and build your relationships, especially in the family of God. Not just in your family, God. In your families, at home, in your work situation, in school as the Holy Spirit has perhaps spoken something to you, you tell me how the Holy Spirit can build unity in your life. 
Okay? And through you, how you can better protect unity and build your relationships. Go ahead and text me at this. And while you text those thoughts, I just want to share with you just a little bit more on this last slide that I had here, the aspect of trying to keep unity in the divisive times of COVID. These are some incredibly trying times because, you know, we keep getting told you need to distance yourself. You need to keep yourself separated from each other. That is totally, totally against the nature of people. And you see kids get together. You see teenagers get together. What do they do? They huddle together. Why? Because it is part of our social nature to connect. People want to be close. We were created that way because created in the very image of God who is a perfect unity. And we seek that. We seek closeness. And social distancing violates our essence and nature that we were created in. It also creates an incredible amount of emotional and psychological as well as spiritual struggle. Because we need each other. We feed in healthy ways off of each other. And let me tell you, as a pastor, this is totally frustrating. Because what is a pastor? comes from the word poinas. And it means a shepherd. And what does a shepherd do? He keeps the sheep together, right? And here, instead of being able to keep the sheep together, I'm told, no, you got to keep your sheep apart. Ah! <laughs> it is incredibly frustrating because it goes against the nature of what we are as people, what my calling is, and what we're trying to build in relationships. So we need to understand, in the midst of all of this, we need to still seek to build unity and closeness even in this difficult time. Let me share with you some of the ideas you have all brought out together. Here are some ideas giving encouragement to each other, loving one another. Keep negativity to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't have something good to say, don't say anything right. Help building up people. Let them know that they don't fight battles alone. Treat other people with respect. I like that. Here's another. Uh, holding back before speaking. Yeah. Engage the brain before we put the mouth in gear, right? <laughs> Engage the brain before the mouth goes into gear. Uh, here's one. Use my first Peter 3.10 duct tape for my mouth. <laughs> another one. Um, text the verse of the day to people. I have three people I frequently share the verse with. Here's another idea. Using this time to read and pray more to learn what God wants from me. Mm -hmm, I like that. Here's another idea to build unity. Communicate better with family. Yes, we need that. This one says FaceTime more. This one says, oops, I'll make sure I didn't get missing one there. Okay, I'll make sure I'm not missing any. <laughs> Being more intentionable, intentional about keeping in touch. Here's another one. Speak life. Don't judge other people. As mentioned, aperture. Mm -hmm. And focus. Stay positive. I like that. Here's another one. Um, forgive. 70 times 7. Mm -hmm. Don't leave anger on the table. Yeah, definitely. And put on that First Peter 3.10 duct tape for the mouth. Forgive 70 times 7. Mm -hmm. I like that. Here's another one. Don't fight over the small things. Probably don't fight over the big things. Work those things out, right? Yeah. Fight the problem, not the person. Thinking before doing. Yep. 
That's good. There's a lot of great ideas right here, aren't there? Well, we need to close in prayer. So stand with me, if you would, please, dear ones. I'm going to tell you, don't just practice what I preach. Practice what you just preached. <laughs> you had all these ideas on how you can build unity. I want you to do that. I want you to create more connectivity. I want you to make sure you take our four things, right? To be lowly, have a humble attitude, to make sure we are gentle, to make sure that we are patient and long-suffering, and to make sure that we bear with one another. These can be trying times and difficult days, but God wants to bless you in the midst of them. Let's start with the most important thing of all, the Holy Spirit within us. Would you just bow your heads and close your eyes and pray with me right out loud and say, Dear Jesus, you died for me so I could be reconnected with you. I could be connected to God. You paid for my sin, and I am sorry for my sin. I surrender my life to you. I am yours, Holy Spirit. Fill me fresh and new. Use my life to reflect Jesus. You've given me unity. Help me to keep it. To prevent injury. To prevent loss of unity. To have healthy relationships. Built strong. Sustained in love. Because I belong to you. Use me as a peacemaker and a vessel of yours in a world of such need. Help me keep my focus on you and positive as a person of faith. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here this morning, friends. I love you. God bless you. You are dismissed.